Good morning, dear friends. Victor Dostov, chairman of the Association of Electronic Money and Electronic Transfer, and also an international advisor to the United Nations. We're going to discuss a very interesting subject today. We have already results of uh, our survey. Given that we're pressed for time, we're not going to have maybe a discussion with the floor, but you can ask your questions in mobile application. We have Mr. Shritsov with us, Chairman of the Supervisory Board of the Moscow Exchange, Mr. Kuznetsov, uh, a bit of Russia, Mr. Zurabov, General Director of NPC Mikramir, as we turned his microbiologist by education, Mr. Mamuta, Head of the Service of the Protection of consumers' rights and member of the board of directors of the Bank of Russia, Mr. Ushakov, chairman of the Commission on Digital Finance Assets and advisor to their uh, Chamber of Industry and Commerce, and Mr. Podbereznyak, chairman of the executive board of MSP Bank. We're going to talk about funding businesses. We understand that we have a variety of developed tools. Businesses really raise money and businesses work. Probably the current problem is the venture financing of business for <coughs> For obvious reasons, we see a drop in funding, and there is assessment by B1 that venture financing this year dropped 10 times over. Clearly, uh, there are plenty of growing companies, in particular in small and medium businesses segment and micro business as well. And indeed, we see that unfortunately, luckily or unluckily, there is a big share of companies, over half of them, by a significant margin, rely on their equity. On the one hand, that's good, but on the other hand, uh, for efficient development, you need to raise funds from external sources. We see two stories here, as usual. The first story is about attractiveness of the market itself. And the second story, I will call it the story of tools. We can give new tools for businesses to raise investment. At the same time, if we see at the results of the poll, the results are pretty conservative and they are become increasingly more conservative because people say that, no, we don't need a radically new tools. Let's digitalize the existing tools. We are going to discuss it among other things. Therefore, one of the opportunities is that businesses which largely use debt or uh, equity financing less frequently, they may use some other tools. And one of such tools is uh, new forms or classical forms of concession transactions, where equi uh, assets or arise are transferred under concession. It may be a story as uh, ancient as the ancient Rome, but quite recently we saw a new tool emerging, utility digital rights, which allow to increase dramatically effectiveness of such transactions. I did some homework and in my Telegram channel I surveyed our participants and it turned out that about 40% of our audience are familiar with this instrument. Sergey Anatolich, will you discuss utility digital rights as an option for making a concession, concession deal? And probably a few words about this tool. Thank you, dear friends. It's my pleasure to greet you this morning uh, here at Finopolis. <coughs> Uh, we drafted the law on digital utility, on utility digital rights quite a uh, long time ago, but we need to address some 
tax considerations and we should remove some barriers for the constituted members of the Federation to use it because constituted members of the Federation now have to place bonds to raise funds. But the product has a good outlook and is explained by the fact that in the digital era and one of the digital era, the next era will be the AI era. Uh, the value added creation chain is modified dramatically and utility digital right is uh, the digitalization of crowdfunding and it plays an important role where without participation of classical intermediaries like banks you are able to fund a project a project uh, is funded by people who believe that this project is necessary and they're looking not only after a high interest rates and uh, they are addressing their own objectives in terms of improving the way they live and where they live. Talking about concessions, concession is an important tool in Russia. Unfortunately, it's quite a recent one and the legal framework has been changed dramatically several years ago, but the accumulated amount of transactions about 4 trillion rubles. Well, uh, retail investors about 9 billion rubles. 4 trillion rubles is quite a big amount. And that sharing risks between state and businesses where the state provides uh, uh, necessary real estate, electricity supplies, and guarantees at least some minimum demand allows project finance to meet both ends meet. And small size project and probably even larger projects over time, when utility digital rights become a usual instrument, may be financed without participation of banks through the capital market. What is the trick of this funding? Classical tools like equities mean uh, sharing the profits. Uh, it's not a fact that infrastructure projects have uh, the profits at all. They may be monetized not through their own profits, but due to the fact that a variety of business emerge around this infrastructure. And for a business which directly involves into infrastructure uh, through, uh, let's say, through different commissions and charges and utilities, it's a long-term story, but it's not a fact that it may be profitable after all. And the combination of a new tool which reduces costs doesn't require uh, allocation of banking capital allows to achieve some acceptable level of feasibility. For example, we're building a pay a toll road. A toll road will address a variety of objectives. It will not be constructed free of charge. It will be payable and create some comfort. And the person, when investing in construction of a toll road, acts on the principle either use or receive. If he uses tokens for uh, paying the toll, he pays less because he invested uh, before that and has, uh, well, some advantage, some privileges. And if he doesn't use the tokens to pay for the toll road, he obtains a share in profits. The same is true about the green transport. On, uh, which uh, charges some fee from the households, and this fee is distributed between the participants. And there may be a variety of such projects. It may be construction of cafes or some sports facilities, uh, for example, go golf course. Golf course. Uh, you will not find a bank which will finance it. But if people do it for that, but then there will be a variety of infrastructure around this golf course, uh, restaurants, high-end apartments, etc. Over time, it will pay back. But <clears throat> and not to spend a lot of time on that, I would like to say that such stories and a promising project is making pools of uh, uh, 
uh, apartment houses for leasing out. Why? The mortgage lending situation with high rates is a burden for households. Households are encumbered already by mortgage loans and you'll have a difficulty to find a person paying, able to pay a down payment. Lease psychologically is not useful for Russia, but, but nevertheless, uh, in many countries, 80% of households lease their housing. It in improves mobility and it increases disposal income uh, remaining after paying the rent. But uh, to lease it out, you need a pool of such housing. And there are projects uh, where uh, indefinite <coughs> leasing, which combines uh, combines advantages of rent and ownership. Uh, I, on the one hand, I pay rent. On the other hand, I receive it in my ownership. The share of the apartment, which uh, I do not own, is in a pool, and uh, other people either uh, uh, pay tokens to pay the rent or uh, receive a share of the rent. And uh, uh, we will uh, launch it onto the market, uh, and it will be very helpful uh, for the construction companies. Uh, and uh, also, it will assist uh, the citizens who are not able uh, to get a mortgage lending. And uh, if they uh, provide services to a part of this housing, uh, token uh, is a good thing for uh, citizens and for the owners. And at the same time, you may be uh, 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 lesser and lessee. And these schemes will be very popular in the foreseeable future. And uh, the question arises, actually two questions in one. If we have the secondary market of these tokens, and if this market is a limited one uh, by the primary market, how these uh, tokens uh, uh, combine the responsibility and liability of the uh, lesser uh, for their uh, housing. And uh, if uh, this is a lifelong uh, rent, it is uh, not very essential uh, how he or she maintain it. But as the smart contracts, they live around these uh, tokens and uh, the uh, rental uh, rentals uh, are uh, drawn back um, every month, uh, and square meters are there, and uh, and actually rent is a part of his property. In other words, and if it is uh, five percent of his share, so. Uh, it is a, a point of for negotiations, but uh, in other words, if you have a, um, a higher share, uh, you may renovate the apartment uh, via these mechanisms. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, let's talk uh, about another project uh, uh, which is uh, being uh, implemented with due regard to the investment uh, vehicles. Uh, and uh, uh, will you please have a say? You gave uh, two theses. We do not have uh, to invent any other tools. They are all there. And uh, we are supposed to give an access uh, to the physical uh, persons, to the mass scale instruments. And when back in 2019, we uh, drafted a new law uh, so, Vetsepe uh, was uh, not just a new type of investment, but it was the alternative for the debt investment or project funding. Uh, when the SMEs could raise funds under their long term con uh, contracts, uh, being able to uh, uh, produce some goods and deliver them. It's a utility. Uh, the digital rights instrument. And uh, also, they may invest into a long-term uh, contract 
and uh, the key players may be the institutes for development. If they have a long-term contract uh, for the delivery of specific goods, they may address the institutes for development, uh, get a funding, buy component parts and uh, some uh, materials and feedstock uh, and do the job. And in Spain, they have uh, the reverse uh, financial factoring and 50%, 50, 60% of business are kept by this uh, reverse uh, fa factoring. And uh, we are uh, no longer using the delivery uh, principle of uh, factoring. Uh, it's a reverse factoring, uh, which becomes a more serious instrument for them, uh, for the mass, mass scale investor. And uh, if you have uh, an annual contract with retailers uh, and on a monthly basis you have to deliver goods and you need funding, that's another story. Uh, we uh, have a long-term contract. We have a production site which needs to be upgraded. We create new jobs, new companies, and uh, this is uh, uh, what we uh, mean by the utility digital rights. and. Uh, this is a digital form uh, with a smart uh, contract, and it becomes uh, very handy for the uh, various uh, uh, studies uh, and surveys. At the first stage of your project implementation, uh, you uh, present the feasibility of technologies, then the pilot stage uh, uh, follows, then you register the product, uh, and the utility digital right uh, gives you a chance at all the stages to uh, modify the uh, right uh, for uh, the claim. And uh, so these are very, uh, there is a number of milestones, uh, uh, setting a point, then the pilot stage. And uh, if everything is okay, uh, the project will be scaled up. And then you may be provided the rights uh, for the final uh, product uh, to be produced. And this is a part of the utility digital rights uh, for investors. Uh, this is uh, a key story. In practical terms, uh, we get the financial instruments uh, uh, which are secured uh, by the uh, tangible assets. And in practical terms, we regulate uh, the uh, utility digital rights in terms of uh, production and output. And in this case, financial mediators are not needed, uh, which is very handy for investors. And they have a flexibility for regulating uh, very stringent uh, uh, practices. And in the present day situation, uh, we acquire the new opportunities uh, for goods export, uh, and it becomes uh, uh, simpler. And those dealing with the export of products uh, are prepared uh, to issue utility digital rights uh, uh, and even uh, deal uh, with the foreign jurisdictions, uh, and uh, that will be a foreign uh, trade. And uh, this may be an instrument uh, for uh, payment for the uh, green, and uh, it is allowed by the legislation. I would like to thank our regulators for that. And all the banks and 70% uh, of the investment platforms uh, got the right uh, to be delegated uh, with uh, these uh, deals. Uh, in terms of utility digital rights availability, not necessarily that they have to become the clients of some fi financial organizations. They may get identified via foreign organizations using the utility digital rights. And uh, really, this is a very practical instrument. And if in the past uh, we uh, assessed uh, the market uh, worth five, eight billion without uh, UD UDR, and that was the ceiling for investments for SMEs and the project financing prevailed vis a vis startups. And if the business would like to be developed further, we had to identify a specific ceiling 500 billion rubles. 
and that is what we have now. And uh, we have some disrupted uh, logistic chains, but uh, as to UDR, uh, we have quite an infrastructure uh, enabling the foreign investor to get an access to our market. It turns to be a very interesting story, and uh, let's just ge get a deeper insight onto that uh, topic. And you already optimistically highlighted uh, the utility digital rights uh, as uh, an instrument for the ultimate payment for uh, goods and services. Uh, but is it possible to use it as a secondary token? Is it going to be traded at some informal market? Uh, and we have a limitation on the token as a payment instrument. Uh, what is the perspective uh, of such a clearing token? And I would like to split the international clearing and uh, the uh, payment facilities uh, for uh, foreign trades. And uh, we may use the UDR and the 299 FZ doesn't give any limitations and any ceilings. And actually, you may use this right to confirm uh, these services and it facilitates uh, the international deals with the grain for example but if we are talking about the international clearing and we are not we are supposed to, to show uh, the uh, payment uh, facilities uh, nating could be done in excel table but if it is an international clearing and we're talking about the liquidity and we have the token uh, projects uh, uh, denominated uh, in gold and this uh, utility token for gold could, uh, is uh, not an instrument of payment. It's an instrument of the international clearing, which presents the balance at the level of importers and exporters. And that is uh, not an instrument for payment, but for international clearing. And it is a key uh, instrument, decentralized and an independent one. The entire international uh, trade needs uh, fast deals and uh, uh, security and safety. And uh, if we talk about the customs uh, and uh, about uh, the deals per se, they have to be relying on the security first and foremost. And when we talk about the digital rights, and you are absolutely right that this is a kind of a blockchain uh, which may be transferred to you in the form of a token without any financial mediator. And we may uh, just uh, set up a financial infrastructure for various countries and for the market players, and they're supposed to, to transfer these uh, tokens to one another. That should be a guaranteed story, but the infrastructure should be there. Uh, why do we need uh, them in the West if the infrastructure of Russia is not conducive to that? Thank you for your very detailed answer. Already we have touched upon the uh, survey and for R&D funding, and it's a long uh, story. And it is uh, conjugated with uh, quite a sophisticated trajectory for uh, scientific uh, uh, studies. Uh, for example, we start from the cheese and got penicillin, and uh, nobody uh, expected it to happen. So I would like to ask Alexander Yurievich, the head of Micromir, uh, and w would you like uh, to talk about the R&D and uh, talked about the bacteria foggy? Thank you so much, bacteria fox. And I would like to start from two comments. My, our distinguished moderator has simply mentioned that SMEs 
are funded by 50% from the equity. And it is uh, as some kind of uh, drawbacks or some unexpected story. Uh, 15, uh, 20 years ago, we made a survey, and it turned out that 90% of all the revolutionary R&Ds are funded by the owners or their friends or relatives. And it cannot be explained at the very start of that business uh, this way. Already we made some kind of uh, an interview as to the utility digital rights. Uh, we really have to digitize what is available and everything will look good. But uh, this is another uh, misconception. And if we talk about uh, the scientific innovation, it uh, radically changes uh, a traditional representation as uh, what is going on in the particular sphere. I am going to dwell upon a uh, bacteria uh, fakes uh, for about phages for about uh, 30 years. Uh, and we are working with angel investors and venture investors. We fund everything with our own, own uh, equities. And uh, bacteriophages are available at the public domain. And when the WHO uh, claimed that the era of antibiotics is coming to an end, 20 years have passed since then, and there are no results of any sort. No, no we do not have any antibiotics and nothing extra. Uh, the only thing that we have uh, now is uh, the more the, uh, stringent uh, procedure for selling these uh, drugs. And uh, in, so, in some countries, uh, these uh, sales are closed uh, even. Or uh, the um, physicians have to minimize uh, the volume of anti antibiotics consumption. But over the past 20 years, uh, we had uh, an upscale of uh, antibiotics consumption, and uh, which is uh, nowadays coming to its critical phase. And uh, uh, we have to be guided by specific logics in that sphere. Like an enforced objective, which does have solution principle. We need other approach. Bacteriophages are uh, viruses, very specific, which are able to restrict replication of a bacteria only of their own species. And the specificity is so high that any bacteria of uh, specific type has not only one phage, but certainly there may be 10 or 50 or 100 of them. I remember an uh, experiment where they found about 500 phages for bacteria of one species. And it is impossible to produce a medication, uh, neither biochemical nor bacterial, nor biological, which will without doubt restrict the bacteria causing disease. What the main solution we propose it is that as a company we accumulate a huge collection of bacterial phages and now hundreds of them and maybe thousands of them to add them for the actual bacteria which are winters for uh, therapy treatment. It's not a straightforward objective how to identify them to provide for cleanliness of production of substances containing bacteriophages. We do it, but we do it at the pace that we can afford and the market can consume. What is What does the mean the utility digital right mean for us? We're prepared to issue tokens for individuals that will be the cost of one medication, 500. The buyer of a token receives an opportunity in a matter of a year or two to approach us when he or she has a problem and uh, where the existing antibiotics are not efficient. And if we receive 
the clinical material and we know what bacteria dominates there, within several days we can produce a custom tailored medication that will really help this patient. But to this end, we need to expand the collection of phages that we have. This scheme is attractive for us because we tell people we cannot guarantee you that in two years time we'll be able to select it for a product which is chitin tailored to you. The, however, the likelihood is very high. We continue working. We registered with the Ministry of Health a new substance of bacteriophage which allows us to use this substance to create uh, sophisticated composites. When this need arises for you, most likely will be able to provide at short notice a solution which may be life saving for you sometimes. However, we said why it may be interesting for you on top of insurance. The volume of this production cannot be huge. Therefore, a person who will have a token will have a privilege in receiving this product. Secondly, this person will have uh, this product at a price which is fixed today, and we don't know what may be the price of this product in a matter of two or three years when it will tap the market. And the fact that we can uh, propose it not only to individuals but also to medical establishment, we can offer this to chemists who will be able to sell it by using tokens to receive the product at an original price. It is a combination of marketing for us because we understand people need it. People understand that the problem is critical for them and they need to have something in case of an outbreak of this disease. That is in a nutshell why we uh, like and were interested in this tool. Thank you. I see, see. Yes, yes. I well, I, as I told, the, your uh, contribution will be in significant demand. Thank you for what, what you are doing. It is a big issue, in my opinion, for the afterward generation when antibiotics were in fashion, and uh, these people will have those antibiotics inside of them in such quantity. I will ask a dull and maybe an unpleasant question to you. We understand that as opposed to apartments, the result is risky anyway. There may be a situation where you funded a research, a clinical research, and the person approaches you and you fail to find a solution for this particular problem, how you will transform your token so that uh, the person will not leave empty-handed. We are not just a scientific center, we're also a production center. We're doing it right now. The most important thing is that we may add to this mission for the token and thereafter, we're prepared to offer to our buyer with our drugs in the market with bacteriophages, which are sold in big amount of packs. Well, for those for whom we didn't find a custom tailored solution, we'll be able to propose a product which was already in the market. Maybe it's not custom tailored, but financially it will be advantageous. The person will not lose money. 500 rubles for this right. It's not a big risk uh, that will uh, scare off uh, potential buyers. Uh, I give the floor to our next speaker. Uh, he is in a pretty uh, sophisticated, he was complicated situation for a speaker. We'll ask Mr. Ushakov to comment the legal uh, difficulties in using uh, that federal law, because he will do it in front of the people who have drafted this law. What needs to be done to improve this law to make it even more workable? Thank you, dear colleagues. Good morning. I will respond to what has been said and then briefly on project finance in several models. 
how you can improve the law against the current version. We talked about the utility to digital rights, and we mentioned the uh, uh, the notion of things. It uh, approves the right to transfer things. A thing is a certain legal entity. Well, if we describe it as goods, it will open more opportunities, not only things, but goods as well. We also mentioned the possibility of acquiring utility digital rights by institutional investors, but generally, the assets, acquisition of assets by institutional investors is linked to some ratings, ratings of securities or digital rights. Now we see that rating agency are prepared to rank debt. Uh, well, there are now some methods already available, but digital uh, utility digital rights something different, it's not debt. We uh, mentioned that uh, uh, utility digital rights are required in the real estate market. I have a request sometimes. There was a uh, utility digital rights for a square meter. Uh, it's, it's a marketing story. Well, uh, there will be in demand now, there will be uh, a demand for an instrument that will give a right to real estate. But there are some restrictions in the law which are understandable because it was decided to use this tool, this tool on simpler in simpler transactions, but uh, the deals uh, which are subject to notarization cannot be uh, used with the utility drill rights. About project finance now. Project finance indeed is a financing for a specific project. Investor expects to receive some yield for a specific, from a specific project. The market of digital rights offers a lot of opportunities. Uh, the president issued an instruction to produce a tool that will be linked to uh, revenues or proceeds from a project. It can be done now through the uh, through the digital tools. It may be it may be a, not a debt instrument attached to uh, the revenue and not an equity. The issue will have an advantage because. It doesn't allow investors to enter the share capital, and not each investor wants to be part of an equity capital. It's not a classical project finance story, because uh, this instrument will be on the balance sheet of the issuer. If you look at the classical project finance story, then the risk of the originator of the project should be separated from the risk of the project itself. And in fact, special purpose vehicles are used for this purpose. Special purpose vehicles allow to uh, delineate these risks. In the Russian law, in the Russian law, there are uh, SPVs, and uh, well, and the special financing societies, which are used for securitization action, and uh, special uh, project finance vehicles. In ideal world, it's a company which works as, as a vehicle, which works as sort of pre-arranged algorithm. Uh, it carries out a technical function largely. Uh, uh, by acquiring a debt instrument which is issued from this special vehicle, an investor invests in a project and it is separated, it's, he's separated from other potential risks. Its special vehicle use is operating as an algorithm. Potentially, in future, you can buy a smart contract. Therefore, if you look at the classical story, then the special vehicle may act as a customer of construction of a toll road, for example, and then when this road is completed, this project uh, takes care of itself. In practice, we see that special vehicles are underdeveloped as yet. In practice, there was a project financing factory, and Domarev produces uh, 
has special vehicles of its own. It will be interesting that uh, companies not related to the state will use such financing models. At the construction stage, the guarantees from the state are important, but then uh, the project may be self-sufficient. It will allow to save public funding. Uh, the state guarantee may be issued for the entire debt, and in this story, uh, the guarantee uh, will cover the liabilities of the issue for the construction stage only. And then the project should be self-sufficient. The debt which is issued by such specific vehicle may be ranked and rated, and it may be secured by cash flows, cash flows from the taller road. What are the regulatory difficulties that I perceive now? I would, I will compare the statutes. I will put on the same uh, footing the uh, statutes of the digital financial assets and debt because in the law now, special, uh, it is not clear what special vehicles can do, what cannot do. Can be, cannot do a party to a pension scheme. It will be good. Thank you. Thank you, Alec. But indeed, you answered my question that I wanted to ask. Supposing you have a magic wand and you can correct a provision of the law, what you will correct in this 259 law? I will remove uh, restrictions regarding the transactions which are subject to state registration. Okay. It's a good story. It's a good wish. Now we give the floor to our regulator. And Mikhailovich, can I ask you? Can I ask you to discuss you? What is your regulator's take? What uh, it is in how house view of the central bank of the Russia? Uh, can these digital stories be used for financing a successful development of Russian small and medium businesses? Thank you so much. Everything is working. Uh, good morning. Uh, glad to see you all. Uh, we have a discussion about the future, but uh, it's a good thing for Finopolis, and uh, we are talking about the future opportunities, and it is a very productive discussion. In my capacity of a regulator, I would like to respond in the following way. At the very start of our discussion, Sergey and Stepan gave us a very detailed story about the origination of uh, the digital instruments as they were the father founders of that particular process. The question arises how to uh, use it uh, in practical terms and uh, how to use it for the issuer and how to use it for the investor. And actually, th these are not 100% investors and issuers, uh, but I'm going to use uh, these particular terms uh, to facilitate our discussion. Uh, ut utility digital right is a new class of instruments, uh, and it gives uh, um, a human being an opportunity not to get uh, a revenue uh, or some dividends uh, in their uh, practical or conventional way, but uh, some other material results uh, will be visible. And uh, from the perspective of a buyer, uh, he, well, we think of the potential interest in the product. And also, utility digital rights give us a chance to view investments in a, uh, from another angle. And also, the final uh, product will be of interest to the investors as well. In the previous uh, uh, speech, uh, it was, has been aptly mentioned uh, the uh, adaptability of uh, bacteriophages, and uh, we really have uh, to think of the future of such particular drugs. Uh, uh, and in the future, uh, we will be relying on them. 
in most cases. And there are quite a number of other cases. For example, if you come to a new district, there are no cafes, no fitness centers or other facilities. And the owner of the cafe or the owner of the fitness center offers the utility digital right to you that you uh, have a chance uh, to buy it. And if you want to drink coffee there and visit fitness center there, uh, for you it's a good thing. And uh, the there are other options for utility digital rights uh, and it could be expert import operations as well. And if people are interested in some ultimate product, in some ultimate consumption and uh, at the counter agent may be interested in the uh, insurance and securitization of his uh, uh, project this instrument becomes very handy and we need uh, uh, accountability some kind of a distributed register and uh, we were, were supposed to have some kind of a warranty and guarantor and it could be one of our institutes for development or maybe a few of them. And when we talk about something new and the utility digital right is a new reality for all of us, in order to get this market raised, what do we need? From the part of the investors, uh, we expect uh, trust and confidence. And uh, a number of key stories are necessitated on that score. And in order to uh, uh, shape up this uh, trust, uh, we s see the role of the Institute for Development uh, f first and, the form and foremost. When several years ago we launched a project uh, on the SME that was uh, the crowd investing, crowdfunding for SMEs, there were quite a number of questions to arise. Who needs that uh, in particular? And small sized companies uh, will not go. Uh, IPO or use some other financial instruments and three or four years have passed since then and these instruments have be become uh, the mass scale ones uh, and not just necessarily market based uh, so we have billions and billions of rubles in their deals although of three or four years ago it was just the utopia the market is changing, the infrastructure is changing, and we have a demand for that. And uh, utility digital uh, rights mechanism is uh, and will be in demand. So we need trust, we need quality, and uh, trust uh, is a very fragile instrument. It uh, could be uh, ruined uh, just uh, overnight. And it's hard to reinstitute the image. Uh, from the perspective of uh, the uh, cost, the issue of utility digital rights is not at all uh, uh, cheap, but it should be economically viable for issues. So far, uh, we do not have a market for that. We have some uh, crowdfunding uh, uh, platforms, we have some operators uh, for UD. UDR, but uh, the operators of the market and issues should negotiate upon the application of this mechanism, thus creating an infrastructure. And in conclusion, let me emphasize that if we assess this particular instrument from the perspective of a regulator, we are very much interested in the hybrid uh, forms already uh, we discussed. Uh, uh, the utility digital rights and other instruments to be combined and actually the small sized and large sized issues will actually use this instrument and they have quite a broad horizon for that and it will be very substantial for the market. Also, I would like to once again underline the criticality of confidence and trust and we 
need not just the magic pen, but the magic eraser. Uh, it is very good for every lawyer. Uh, we see the potential of that market, and uh, definitely the, it, this instrument will be in demand. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, 259 Feze on uh, digital uh, rights uh, is uh, somewhat in the shadow, but 255 uh, is more advanced. Uh, not everybody knows uh, the essence of the instrument for utility digital rights. Uh, every, already we have quite an audience here. People are aware of that. We have issues. We have uh, uh, regulators. We have investors. Uh, but uh, uh, supply and demand uh, go together. And this is the market mechanism. And we have to be practical. Uh, and uh, if uh, it is in demand, we will have a market for that. If not, there will be no market for that. But so far, we are discussing the opportunities and options for this instrument. Of course, risks are incurred. Uh, uh, do incur, but the potential is great. Uh, we are somewhat pressed for time, but already it's worthy to mention the secondary market. Uh, what makes uh, uh, UDR a unique instrument? It could be sold, resold, combined with something else, uh, and uh, there could be some sophisticated schemes uh, for the follow-up transactions. Uh, and the potential of this token uh, is a far-reaching one, and it is uh, it has not been yet uh, uh, disclosed. Uh, thank you so much for your. Uh, contribution. I would like uh, to give the floor to uh, Mikhail Vasilievich, uh, and uh, let me uh, ask you about your plans uh, and how are you going to deal with the UDR or probably the uh, guarantees factor. G good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, actually, the day is coming. Uh, thank you, Mikhail Ivanovich. We've been dealing with that instrument for quite a long time, and we would like um, to talk about the future. And uh, uh, talking about the uh, practically new instrument, and we call it a new asset class. Uh, and we try to extrapolate uh, uh, to the actual reality, actually what is going on now at the market. Our bank today is very actively operating at the uh, bonds market within the framework of uh, SMEs SWIFT. We are the organizers of this process. And we acquire about 50% uh, um, at the subscription book. And we would like uh, to uh, somehow make this market more active and to actually to push the market. And we're talking about the class of assets, uh, a specific class of assets. And it's a kind of a thorny road for us. And how the secondary market is going to be shaped, how the regulator is going to assess this market uh, in terms uh, of uh, uh, reserving and backing up uh, special funds. Uh, sooner or later, uh, we will come to that particular functionality. And that will be the funds raised uh, from the capital markets. Further on, factoring has been already mentioned as another instrument of other activity. And uh, this is a part of our foreseeable future. We are actively developing this particular vector uh, jointly at various uh, uh, platforms. Uh, we have uh, factoring, uh, we have other instruments for SMEs, uh, and also there are other trends underway concerning the utility digital rights, uh, and it's, it is conjugated with other trends. And the third business area to mention, 
uh, which is a more f far sighted one, but it has very good uh, prospects. That is the digital securitization. Uh, there are uh, pros and cons as to this uh, particular trend. Uh, we are uh, keen on the transparency and efficiency of this business. Uh, we need to talk about the audit of portfolio and also the facilitation of the entire process. And it is not an, an obvious uh, uh, process, uh, and it is uh, not less costly than the conventional forms. But uh, citing uh, uh, classics, uh, we should uh, come to a more efficient and uh, less costly model. The digital market uh, has uh, underwent uh, uh, this uh, the stage of uh, optimism, but there were some disillusionments uh, and also some uh, other uh, reprimands as to this market. Uh, but uh, we have to think uh, about the so-called digital realism. And we are somehow cleaning up this process at the market. So we really have to be more realistic. We really have to speak of something tangible. We really have to simplify the infrastructure and uh, uh, boost it as well. And uh, one of uh, the key banks uh, for us is uh, the SMEs bank, uh, which may be a very good uh, market player and good contributor to this process. I think I'm pressed for time. No, actually, you haven't yet exceeded the time limit. A question goes to you. Uh, what about the universal products? Uh, are they the products of the future, uh, like factoring, tolling, and other ones? Uh, and uh, for example, we'll have 5% of uh, factoring and 15% of tolling. Or we have to speak about some uh, specialized products which will be applicable in the long run. Uh, the infrastructure looks uh, absolutely the same, but uh, we anticipate to have quite a range of goods uh, at uh, the market, uh, like in a supermarket. But we have uh, to find some kind of a uh, fleet, and we have the utility digital rights, we have uh, other instruments, uh, and we have a pen and an eraser, and uh, thus we need to think about the changes. So we have already laid the foundation. Uh, it has been mentioned in a somewhat different uh, context. Uh, let's 100 flowers uh, uh, to bloom. Originally, there were 10,000 flowers. Okay, we would like uh, to see on the screen the results of our polls. And Dear friends, dear colleagues, I would like to cordially thank our audience, um, and I would like to especially thank the panelists, Yuri Bajor in particular. And uh, we try to do our best, but already we see uh, the results of votes. And these are some new ideas, and we have to get adapted to these ideas. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Good luck.